We'll read tonight from Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall, be also, his hand shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. As we consider this text today, um, the last three prophets uh, of the Old Testament are Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And they cover the era of the Jews' uh, restoration after the Babylonian captivity, after they return home. These are prophetic books. Uh, but the corresponding historic books, and I'm not gonna, we won't go into all this tonight, but the, the corresponding historic books with these um, prophetic books are Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. These three Old Testament historic books, which is Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, cover about 100 years, and they tell the story of, of the return of the Jews from Babylon, the rebuilding of the temple and the rebuilding of Jerusalem, and also the reestablishment of the Jews in, in their own land. So I say that to say that though we won't read much in Ezra, in a sense when you're reading the book of Zechariah, you also want to open up the book of Ezra and read them together so you get the prophecy and you also get the history. And so to understand these words that the prophet Zechariah is saying to Zerubbabel, we'll, we'll say that word, a name a few times, to understand what the, the prophet is saying to Zerubbabel, you have to understand the context or the history. So we look in, in Ezra, and Ezra tells us that there are two men that God raised, two men as leaders to lead the first group of Israelites, uh, that returned from the Babylonian captivity. One of them was named Jeshua, or also known as Joshua. So Jeshua, and the other was Zerubbabel. Jeshua was the high priest, so he's the spiritual leader. And Zerubbabel was the uh, civic leader, I guess. Um, Zerubbabel was of the lineage of the king of David. He's the closest to um, king, uh, to that kingly line. Uh, so he was the closest thing to a king in Israel at the time. He was, a, uh, he was the closest thing to a political leader, uh, Jerubbabel was. So he was like a governor over Jerusalem. So in the second year of this first group that came in and, and returned back to their homeland, this, in the second year, Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the people that had returned with them uh, began building, rebuilding the temple. God had put it in Zerubbabel's heart to rebuild the house of the Lord, to work for the Lord and rebuild the temple which had been uh, destroyed. Actually, it would have been a, 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 around 50 years before. It was the first, Solomon's temple was the first temple and that was destroyed uh, and abandoned for about 50 years uh, after the Jewish na nation was exiled. So now, God calls, uh, is beginning to bring the people back, and God calls Zerubbabel to build the temple, to begin building the temple. So they begin the project, and uh, they lay the foundation. And once the foundation is laid, and in Ezra we read that they had what we would call a dedication service, uh, to praise the Lord because the foundation was laid, and there was some rejoicing, and some of the older people that came back were weeping at the same time. 
So all the commotion, some were celebrating, others, others were weeping when they saw the footing of the, the foundation and they realized that this new temple would be a lot smaller. It's kind of like remembering the good old days and lamenting that things are not, or they're not looking like they will be like they once were. Some were celebrating, others were lamenting in the same moment. But at the same time, it was a dedication service, and then we read that the priests uh, took their trumpets, the Levites had their cymbals, they played along with the congregation, they sang a hymn, and the words of the hymn, uh, the basic um, words of the hymn were, the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. And that's often in the Psalms, you see, the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. So no matter what life is like or what the situation is like, it's always, it's always good to praise God like that and, and to remember that God is good. He's always good. No matter what is going on, he's good and his mercy endures forever. Well, whenever we set our mind, anybody sets their mind to work for the Lord, you can expect obstacles or challenges. And here... A great mountain, mountain of resistance, swells before Zerubbabel. He faced what seemed like an impossible task. Uh, the people that had settled surrounding Jerusalem were not happy that the Jews had returned and they were now again trying to rebuild uh, the temple and the city. Uh, so they, dis- determined, they were determined, the people surrounding Jerusalem were determined to discourage God's people, the Israelites, from rebuilding. And so we'll just read, if you're, if in, you're in Ezra, chapter 4. First, the enemies of God's people pretend to be friends and want to help out. You always want to be on guard when the world comes and offers you help. And they want to work along with you. So notice, uh, verse 1 of chapter 4 says, Now when the adversaries of Judah, who were they? The adversaries of Judah and Benj- Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Then they came unto, or to Zerubbabel and to the chief fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. Notice there's a key there. We seek your God. Typically, uh, and I know it may be a figure, uh, just an expression, but typically, if we serve the same God, we say we serve our God. We serve, it's not your God, we serve, I know they're referring to the Jewish God, but still, um, as we see here, they were the, the adversaries. And in verse 3, we see, But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. So when the world comes along and says, we want to work with you, we want to help you build the things of God, build spiritual things. We have uh, some ideas, but they're corrupt. If they, they come from the world. They're, they're, they're not. We have new ideas to introduce to you on what truth is or what, what it means to love your neighbor or our neighbor, what, what it means to be, as I mentioned on Sunday, uh, merciful or compassionate or inclusive. When the world comes along and says, we have something to help you as you're building the house of the Lord, be on guard. Remember, the Bible tells us that the world is the enemy of the cross of Christ. It's a, and the, the world is uh, against God and the things of God. Um, when... The world approaches us, our response is kindly, we have nothing to do with you, in the sense of taking the advice from the world. Uh, When it comes to the things that are uh, of spiritual nature is what we're talking about. We we live in the world, we befriend the world in the sense of we're friendly, we're kind to our neighbors, but when it comes to spiritual advice, all right, we get our marching orders from heaven, from the word of God. So we need to be discerning because the world comes in to offer help. But again, and here we see, well, their true nature comes out in the next verse when we see the response of these people when, when their help is rejected. 
Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in, the, in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So the enemies of Israel began uh, frightening the children of Israel. Uh, uh, began, they were stealing their supplies, making... Uh, them distracted, distracting them with their own belongings to get them distracted for the, from the work of the Lord. Uh, we read they weakened their hands, the people of Judah, and, and troubled them in building. And then in verse 23, it says, they made them to cease by force and power. So if you read the text, you find out that they got the king, the new king, to issue an order to stop the building of the house of the Lord. God had called Zerubbabel and the people of God to build the work of God. And it's a beautiful picture. We have to understand the, the, this prophecy in Zechariah that there was this great mountain of resistance. The devil will use, uh, will frighten, will distract, discourage, ultimately devour, destroy the people of God and the work of God. The, the devil knows how to discourage the people of God. I read someplace uh, someone said, discouragement shackles our vision to do something for the Lord. Discouragement can hinder us in the work of the Lord. So here's Zerubbabel. He's caught in a trap of discouragement. Things were not moving. First of all, as, well, they were not moving as fast as he had hoped, but actually the building became, it came to a standstill. Um, people left the work of God the work of the temple and began working on their own homes. And I believe it was almost like 15 years, 15 to 60 years, 16 years of break from after the foundation was built, people began, they got distracted from the work of God. Uh, and uh, they began to be comfortable working on their own homes and their own, own buildings, and they were comfortable with the work of God being left neglected. We, we don't want to ever get to the point we're all called to be laborers if we're saved in the work of the Lord. And we need to continue to, if you will, hold that burden for the house of the Lord. And um, as Zerubbabel and uh, Jeshua were called, uh, and we'll see in the vision that God gives Zechariah, uh, that, that they were called to be instruments in the work of the Lord along with the rest of the people, but God would help them in spite of uh, the opposition. So, Zerubbabel is discouraged. God comes to Zerubbabel through the prophet. Oftentimes, God spoke to the people by the prophets in the Old Testament. Who does he speak to us through primarily today? By his son, through his word, through his spirit. So, God sends the message to, the, uh, to Zerubbabel through Zechariah and uh, Basically, the message is the temple will be built. But our text, uh, the, the words that are often quoted uh, are not by my nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So God, God's message to Zerubbabel is you will build it. You will be instrumental. You will have a role to play. But remember, it's not by my nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Uh, and we see that God addresses the mountain. Uh, who are thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain. This mount, mountain represented all the hindrances, all the opposition from both the people and the leaders. Does it seem any similar to even what we're dealing with today? Well, there's always going to be opposition to God's people. There's always going to be uh, uh, those that oppose the work of the Lord. There, there will be those that want to help the work of the Lord, but only to destroy or corrupt it. But, but uh, at the same time, God comes to, with a message that I will help you. You just continue on. March on, Zerubbabel and Joshua. Uh, march on, I will help you. It will be um, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. And he gives them this vision. We could call it a vision of encouragement. You like a vision of encouragement? Here's one. Uh, God shows Zechariah uh, 
a candlestick and two olive trees. The candlestick or the lampstand on its top had a bowl. You could think of the candlestick as a, what we would think of a candelabra or a menorah. So the, on top of that candlestick or that lamp, there's a bowl of oil that supplies the, the lamp. And um, that oil kept the lights burning, and that lampstand represented the house of God. The two olive trees were the two men, Zerubbabel and Jeshua. And uh, this lampstand was made of pure gold, just like the ones that you would find in the tabernacle or in the temple. And it looked like an almond tree with branches, flowers, and bulbs. The branches came out on three on each side, plus one in the center, so there were seven lights. Like I said, just like a candelabra. So seven lamps uh, on that uh, lampstand. And they were all being fueled by that oil that was pure, clear oil, um, uh, olive oil, that that is. Uh, One of the responsibilities of the priest was to keep that oil burning, was to keep oil in that, uh, uh, to supply that lampstand that was in the holy place. So it took a lot of work. It it involved tending to the lamps, trimming them, filling the oil every morning and every night to keep the lamp burning. But what was different about this vision that God showed Zechariah? There was nobody tending to this lampstand. But rather, these two trees, remember, it it represented Zerubbabel, the governor, and and Jeshua, the high priest. These two trees had branches and and little gold pipes that poured, uh, dripped right into that bowl that supplied uh, oil to the lamp. So this was a miraculous picture Now, here's two olive trees, but it's divinely supplied. And and often we see in Scripture that the oil is is typified of the Holy Spirit. So the message, this vision of encouragement is um, the lamp will continue to burn. The lamp is the church of God. And uh, how is it going to keep going forward? It's not by might. Might refers to a collective strength of the army. And power speaks to the strength of the individual. And the message is, Zerubbabel is not going to be by the group or the large assembly of workers you have. It's not them that's going to accomplish this. And it's not your individual strength either. Yes, you all will have a role to play, but it will be by the Spirit of the Lord. It's a beautiful picture. God's work will be accomplished, but it will be by the Spirit of the Lord. So tonight... The lesson for us is uh, one question we could ask is, is there a mountain? The picture that Zechariah saw was a great mountain. And um, uh, are there situations in our lives that seem uh, unclimbable, unconquerable? Well, God says, not by might. It's not by your own strength. It's not uh, human strategy is not intellect god calls us to play a role and it's a mystery as a pastor it's a mystery as a a preacher i say it's a mystery of how god calls us to be workers labors together with christ we are called to do a part you are called to do a part but it's not us it's god working and us just being a conduit, just like those olive trees were a conduit for the Spirit of the Lord that represented the two individuals that God used to revive the work in Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. So, you you need a revival in your heart or soul? Would you like to see a revival in our church? Uh, Of course we would, and and your heart is uh, in line with that, that's why you're here, but let us continue to pray And look to the Lord, trusting, knowing, being assured that it's not in our own strength while God calls us to do our part, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. That mountain of opposition or resistance or or trial or problem, whatever it may be, the Lord says, I will make it plain. Uh, He'll create a smooth path. We don't know how always, but he will. 
As we look to him tonight, we'll sing number 638 and have a time to pray.